All right, brother Mario, welcome to the Trash Talk Experience. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. How are you doing? Doing well? Very good, very good. Thank you. Very excited to be here. So I appreciate the opportunity. Bro, this is very like formal. Oh, like man. you're very <laughs> energetic for some reason. <laughs> Normally, I ask a question and everyone's just like, "Yeah, bro." Like, <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, when's the last time that you cried? Do you recall? Oof, all right, we're getting straight into it. Oh no, yeah, is, this is not directed to you, so anyone can answer. Yeah. Well, See, yeah. yeah last time was fairly recent, and it's kind of personal, so I don't want to go into <laughs> that. Last <laughs> yeah. last time, the time before would have been would have been last month. I was overseas on a family <laughs> trip. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and one of my favorite singers, uh, he's an Indian guy, KK, oh, in, Indian rapper? singer. Now he's a, uh, he's a different singer. He sings love songs. Oh, he yeah. passed away. Yeah, he's yeah. fairly young, and I grew up on his music, so yeah. I was kind of, I didn't cry per se, but I was kind of downtrodden, and sad about to cry. But yeah. guys don't cry, so I didn't cry. And I'm, I'm on a family trip, so I'm a lot of times I'm by myself, not doing much. So I started with his songs, then I ended up being Paramo or in Cuba, Boston. Is this oh, Kishore Kumar? No, it's a different uh, KK. He just goes by KK. Okay, okay. And like Paramore and all those people, like they're sad, depressing songs. Yeah, so I'm yeah. in the zone where I'm just sad. Dip- yeah. And I'm walking by myself because like my family just does stuff I don't like to do. <laughs> so I'm like going art galleries, listening to this sad ass music. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm t- and I'm like generally <laughs> sad really until I realize this. Uh, <laughs> so next morning I wake up after the whole night. I'm like, bro, I'm not even in love and why am I depressed? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I but like, say you cried in front of your parents. Would you have cried? Like, would you have shown that emotion? See, I don't, I don't cry in front of people. Like, even when my grandfather passed away, I didn't cry. And I was sad at me, angry at myself that why did I not cry? Mm. Were you like, what the hell's wrong with me? Exactly, I, I was questioning. Last time I cried in front of people was in 2016 during Tarawi. So Tarawi in Ramadan, we have this thing where we pray uh, like two or three hours. Yeah. And I went to this Cherry Brook Mosque uh, and I just, I just went to the last day. Because last day you get feast, you get food. Yeah, hell's yeah. Uh, in Ramadan. So I went last day and I was praying with all the guys in the congregation yeah. and everyone was crying. They do like a dua. Where dua like they're they doing dua and, and they were crying and they were, uh, the dua was in Arabic and I can't understand Arabic. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's crying and I started crying. Yeah. And my, my, I had a logic. I'm like, you know, I, why can't I uh, understand the word of God? I was crying on that thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these guys were crying on a whole story they were yeah, listening yeah, to yeah, 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 and yeah. I was just like you know that, that's the last time I cried in front of people yeah. since then I just like you know yeah guys don't cry so I don't cry in front of people but yeah but do you guys also believe that like it's a hard for a guy to cry in front of other people or it's wrong for, for a guy to be crying I in I was general like, I thought I was like emotionless for a very long time like you? I can I can think of from my adolescent like life so when I was 13 plus I can think of three distinct times I've cried your wedding? Did you cry? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I zoomed into your face. Yeah. Four, yeah. Four, yeah. Four, yeah. Four, I zoomed yeah. into your face and I saw tears, bro. Yeah. Four distinct yeah. times. Four <laughs> distinct times, right? So it was my wedding. I cried um, twice around that period. But the one I want to mention was when I was um, like 15 or something. And my brothers used to like gang up on me. I had two brothers. And they used to gang up on me. What do you mean you had two brothers, bro? <laughs> <laughs> God. No. Yeah, sure. Um, all right. I have two brothers. And back then they used to gang up, gang up on me, right? And they used to, like, I looked pretty like Jewish and I still look a bit Jewish. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so they used to call me like Shalit was my Jewish name that they just made up. Right. And they used to say like Shalom and stuff and make fun of me. And that was you the one. You because someone called you Jewish, bro. That was the one thing that really grinded my yeah, gears. Yeah. And then they just kept hammering with me. And then I went to like my desk in my room and I went to my room and everything. And I was just like. Bro, all you brothers look the same, so you could have called them Jewish back. It wasn't that much of an issue. It doesn't work, though. You know it doesn't work. When there's two against one, anything you say, no matter how good, it just doesn't work. His brother started calling me Aboriginal last week, bro. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to piss me off. (laughs) <laughs> but Mario, as like an Arab man, like in culturally Arabs, like do men like cry a lot or like? See, that's and that's a uh, like taking that to your point, like you say, men don't cry. That's like a um, a big stigma in society today, which is uh, they always try to like you know we always have to be the like the big macho like male yeah, to yeah. like not show emotions and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's very not healthy. So like especially in our culture, um. Men, like people that say they don't cry and whatnot, it's all, they're full, full of shit. Like yeah. everyone mm. does cry. Yeah. Whether it's in front of people or not, yeah, that's a different question. Yeah. A lot of people probably don't like it to do it in front of people or family members because they probably find it um, emasculating. Yeah. So they try to like keep it behind closed doors. But um, yeah, a Fordham University um, a study came out recently uh, saying showing that uh, the people that do block out emotions and don't cry, especially males, are like almost two and a half times more likely to 
commit uh, suicide. Wow. So yeah, it's always like that's the Well, we love when society. guests bring on these like facts because <laughs> we just talk about random stuff, but at the same time, it's good to be backed up with facts. Yeah, and, like, yeah. Like that, and that's the like, uh, it's like it's not really talked about lately. Like, you know, people, as like, you know, we all say they don't want to like uh, speak about it, they don't want to yeah. show their emotion. And yeah. I feel like, you know, that's a very dangerous, yeah, very dangerous game. But yeah, especially in our culture, they don't uh, like, uh, Showing emotion for a man. Yeah, because like for a man that like to cry, it's almost like you know you're admitting defeat in a way. That's how it seems. Yeah, yeah. That's how society yeah. shows it. But yeah. yeah, I think it's very important. Because I go to therapy, right? Yeah, and excellent. then after that, I've noticed that I get emotional, like where, when when needed. Like I'm not just crying, just yeah. like oh yeah, I woke yeah. up, I'm having a bad day, I start crying. Yeah, it's yeah. more so like oh something bad happened. There's a reason crying. behind. It. Yeah, yeah. And then absolutely. I cry at movies and stuff. Like, have you yeah, ever? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I say, oh, pff, everything. Oh, some good animes get me tearing, lad. <laughs> what, what anime got you, bro? <laughs> oh man, have you ever heard of Fairy Tale? No, I no. haven't heard of it, but oh, yeah. Well, you're about to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's yeah, just like I feel like in in animes, especially they can they can show more emotion in like serious scenes. Yeah. Which like you probably can't do in like live action scenes because they're a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, they're definitely bro. Oh, yeah, cartoon Always. shows get me, bro. Yeah. Oh, cartoon movies right. get me. Have you guys yeah. seen Coco? No, I've, I've no. Bro, Coco got me. I've cried three times at Coco. Yeah, the hell yeah. Coco. You have guys haven't seen Coco? <laughs> no. You, uh, do you have guys, you guys? You need to watch Coco. I watched like I've seen my cousins watch it on yeah. Disney Plus. Well, that's but I've never actually actively. What makes it cry? It okay, seems and uh, at the end. Um, I don't want to ruin the movie for you, but it, it, the kid goes up to his mo- grandmother, and his grandmother is forgetting her father. And then the movie is all based around that once you forget your uh, family members that have passed away, they they no longer exist in the afterlife. That kind of thing. Okay, oh, okay. because it's a Mexican okay. movie. Okay. So the kid goes up to his mother and uh, grandmother and wants, great grandmother actually, he wants to her to remember his father. So he sings this song which goes like, remember oh, me shit. and then he's trying to make his grandmother remember and that's the song uh, gr- the her father used to sing to her oh, and then okay. when s- once that song hits bro like i start crying yeah, all the yeah, time hills, yeah. so yeah stuff like that definitely like, i would say i got lost halfway through your explanation <laughs> what do you mean? Like you? i was with you i felt the experience, yeah. I felt the experience. so yeah definitely See, this that is kind why of men have mental <laughs> issues bro he was just opening up about crying and you making fun <laughs> of that my bad bro my bad. Example. Your bad. Example. <laughs> you know, bad, bad. yeah so like definitely movies like Coco, anime, definitely. Uh, even like Avatar, towards the end yeah. of the last season, I started crying through it. So yeah, definitely, it's all right. What do you mean crying different. through it? Like, were you actively sobbing or was it just no, like no, a bro. tear? Like, it's, it's just like, like you get emotional. Yeah, you tear yeah. up. Yeah, you tear up. up. Like, tearing yeah. up is different to crying though, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Cause I like, lo- you can tear up to the random shit. I recently, like I watched the movie Lion. Have you guys seen Lion? No. It's, uh, okay, another movie you guys need to watch. But like, yeah, towards the end, it's about a guy who, uh, from India, he got lost uh, as a kid, got adopted by um, uh, Australian oh, parents. Oh, I've seen this. And then he goes to find his actual mother back in India. Does he have oh, a brother okay. or something as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen this. So yeah, um, that, that made me cry. So yeah, movies make you cry, yeah, definitely. Yeah, especially when they have a lovely meaning like that. And if it relates something to your like e- experience or someone yeah. else's lived experience, yeah. Yeah, hey, you Bob can was understand adopted it. as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it makes me cry <laughs> definitely <laughs> a lot of times. Uh, but uh, in terms of like... Uh, like crying is one thing, like, but do you guys are more aware of like, you know, mental health and like societal issues and stuff like that? Or do you guys still feel like most of the people around you still like resent that as like, uh, oh, the, like, don't talk about that. That's like, we shouldn't be talking about mental health issues. It's not that big a deal. I think, I think the tide's changed. I don't think um, it's that taboo um, to speak about mental Agreed. health, especially yeah. as men anymore. And like, just like, <clears throat> like you mentioned, you went to therapy. I know several guys who go to therapy um, it's not something that's like kept quiet or like, oh, he's he's seeing a shrink and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that that part of like today we were watching a UFC fight and just uh, this morning and a guy won the fight. He said uh, his friend committed a suicide suicide recently. Yeah. Damn. He had a good social circle, good friends. Like he had a full support network to him, but he still committed suicide. So suicide is not strictly just because you have meant like no support. He had he realized he what he was gonna. What he's going to do is going to affect his friends, family. But sometimes he just can't help himself. He had a whole therapy situation going on. Yeah. And the guy, uh, the guy, the UFC guy said after the fight, I'd rather have a friend cry on my shoulder than like, you know, be a part of his funeral. Yeah. That's just some people, you can't fix them until you fix them. They fix themselves. Yeah. And then yeah. That, that's where the issue goes as well. Like you can, you can like have a whole family that um, like knows that like, you know, family members depressed or something and like everyone could support that person. But if that person doesn't want to actually... Like go and like seek uh, 
uh, therapy or actually yeah. make and a sometimes even therapy changes. you can seek therapy but like your issues are your issues no one else can solve them like it's easier to say like you know he didn't go therapy or maybe he ended up going therapy but you just can't get out of, out of the zone which you are in yeah, yeah. the other yeah. thing is I think it, it always takes a few shots to get the right therapist from what yeah. I've heard like uh, I would say that seems, definitely yeah it seems that some people just don't mesh with some therapists or I felt like uh, right. have you guys noticed there's a lot of this kind of stuff going in UK where guys are committing suicide yeah, it happens a, everywhere. Happen everywhere, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's, a it's lot. just like um, anything that affects the way you think, act, and feel. Like so, uh, certain people, like if they are presented with like a very negative situation, certain people just know how to deal with it. They're just like, okay, this is a bad thing that happened in my life. You know, someone <laughs> passed away. I didn't get a job. Whatever the case is, something negative happens. They know how to deal with it. They're like, we move on. But certain people just don't have the skills. It might be because something happened in when they were younger. Something traumatic happened to them that when a negative situation is presented to them, they don't know how to react to that situation uh, as well. I reckon. Uh, I, I don't. I can't compare. Or I don't have statistics behind me right now. But uh, I think we are better off in Australia than other Western countries. In terms of support, we are. But mental health mm. issues are really, I really not even wild support. I would Australia. say like we have free education. Because thing is, uh, let's say a white guy from America. Um, most guys are in a cycle of mediocrity. Like ni- if you have people from 20, 30, most guys would be on the chubby side. N- yeah. um, not good ed- not good education because there isn't free education in America. Um, no, but like I- I- in Australia, like the issue might not be n- us not have, like we have like healthcare, education, all of these issues, yeah. but then we still have drug issues. We no, have still alcohol so t- issues. No, the thing is like there's still a way out for us. Like we, we can still work at a warehouse, make a very decent salary. We can be bricklayers, make a very decent salary. In America, if you're f- chubby, if you don't have a big fa- family background, rich family background. And, and you're, you're saying edu- issues over there are compounded. Com- compounded. Yeah, Forget yeah, America, compounded. America's first world. Like you can then go down to like third world, third world countries. Pakistan for one mm-hmm. like over there the issues like there's simple issues like they don't have electricity at home so mm-hmm. they don't know how to continue the running their business they have they're earning a minimum wage minimum wage over there is like poverty line yeah. level so they don't know how to sustain so yeah those things can cause you issues but in Australia even if you're privileged like rich people they still have mental health issues so it's not like that if you're just privileged you're going to get away with it you could be the richest person in the world you could be Jeff Bezos his like uh, divorce probably <coughs> caused issues for him as well. So it's not like that you somehow become immune to these things, even if you have the means to like. No, no, he's calm, bro. I had a tough work word with him. <laughs> what, is it, he's good. He sorted. Yeah, okay. he sorted. He <laughs> looks jacked and stuff. So I'm like, maybe he's like, yeah, he sorted himself out. He looks better after his divorce than he did before. <laughs> To so be honest, yeah. he cheated with his missus, bro. So did he? He oh, did, he yeah. Did. yeah he, you spoke to him about this? She, nah, he didn't <laughs> tell me this one. <laughs> okay. We don't bring this up. Okay. But yeah. She's going to be a very rich woman. Yeah. yeah. But like, um, in terms of like, uh, you were talking about like culturally, um, uh, say back in Egypt or within certain circles of your family, is like mental health looked at, like in Pakistan, for example, if someone has mental health issues, they just call him crazy, maniac, mm. don't associate with them. Is it similar like in- Nah, a, bro, it's not like that in Pakistan. It is, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know where you're living, but <laughs> yeah, it is certain, like that. Certain, yeah, it's certain yeah. families definitely have that um, ideology still. <coughs> and still, like, still with us, yeah, certain people do have that, especially the, um, mainly the lower socioeconomic people that, that aren't educated in yeah. that field. Because um, it's still like, you know, psychology and mental health is still only like a 100 to 120 yeah. year old yeah. field. So it's still like vastly developing and still major things are still changing. The DSM-5, that's up to the fifth diagnostic statistics manual book now. Yeah. And it changes every few years. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. still a very, very changing field. Um, our family, we're... Uh, we're a, a, a bit more aware of it. We still like don't like sit down with them. Like, oh, how are you feeling? Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, this that, which I think would be so beneficial for us. Yeah. But we never grew up like that. Yeah. And I, oh, think I, I still I, want to do that, bro. <laughs> 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 nah, I don't want to go think, down that path, bro. I, I think if like, yeah. you know, if if we did go through it, um, like growing up as a family. I think I'd be much less of a hothead than I yeah. am today. Yeah. You know? It's just like <laughs> around like at around the dinner table like Absolutely. Uh, they say like they have this stereotype about white people like they just sit down talk about oh how was your day honey blah 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 whatever. That's so But like we just stereotype it in a way but it's just like a family just sitting down chatting. Exactly. Or it's like oh how was school? Oh yeah dad I actually got into a fight. That kind of stuff, exactly. uh, and then and in that our just culture, getting that oh, off your chest. Yeah. Jimmy, yeah, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And then exactly. for us, like we were like, oh, bro, I don't want to go down that path. But it's just about chatting. We, we didn't grow up exactly. that way, bro. Like, yeah. uh, like we uh, didn't have conversations with family. I've, I've had yeah. this conversation yeah, exactly. with son before. Uh huh. 
And we feel that South Asian or Desi like fathers are like emotionally unavailable to this. Yeah. <laughs> so I recently got a job, and my dad d- just igno- uh, gave but me don't a handshake. Say anything you wouldn't nah, want your dad hearing. He right? gave me a handshake, and he said, "When is the salary slip coming? Because he wants to go for a loan." <laughs> <laughs> like that's the only thing he thought about. Yeah, and yeah. Like, the man. And yeah. Like I would, like I, I, I was, I was raised where I didn't hug a lot, right? Yeah. Like I didn't hug. My brothers, I didn't hug my mom. I didn't hug my dad. It was a weird. If I did hug my mom, it would be like a side hug or something, <laughs> right? And now I got married into, um, and now like I see Zara's family a lot, and they're a hugging family. When I first came in, everyone wanted a hug. I was like, this feels weird. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> yeah. different like it's what very, used to. very different. Yeah, it's definitely. Like physical, uh, like affection is still like a bit of an issue in even in my family. I think, <laughs> but then yeah, emotionally, I think uh, my my dad's pretty good. So like yeah. yeah. Is he amazing, actually? So yeah, I would say. I that. think he grew that's up in Western countries. That's why, because he lived in America and stuff. My dad, honestly, we just just shake hands, and if you're going <laughs> for a forty minute drive, there's gonna be no conversation about investment in properties, yeah. and properties. That's about it. <laughs> no, how your life is going, son? Huh? None of that. No, none of <laughs> yeah. that. And I don't ask them either. But like sometimes I'm curious, like you know, how did he grow up? Where did he grow up? Yeah. But it doesn't happen ever, bro. Yeah. I think yeah. yeah, that's important. Like you should know, like how your parents grew up. Like I ask these questions about like my grandmother. Love hearing from her because it's like, bro, their world was so different to how we yeah, grew up. Yeah, like man. moving multiple countries, this, that, the yeah. other, and I'm like, oh yeah, I would love to know this. And then I compare it to my life. I'm like, <laughs> I got nothing going on. Bro, bro, like, we are so boring. privileged compared yeah. to their, their yeah. era. Like spe- even just the simplicity of this. It's mobile having internet. Yeah. Yeah. Anything I want is at a click In- of a button. Information easily. And like our parents just to do a normal assignment had to yeah. stay in the library for four weeks yeah. just yeah. to. Yeah. Just to find this one little part, yeah. yeah, going through all of these books and shit. Yeah, so but, yeah, we're very blessed. Family is one thing, but even like around your boys, mm. are you yeah. al- like able to be vulnerable around your boys, so, or you find it weird? I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I've got a good bunch of fellas where like we can. <laughs> How we does can, that feel, bro? <laughs> no, no, it feels great. Like, <laughs> okay. so, like when, when you know you can, uh, like whatever you're going through, you can be feeling what you want to feel around the people that you love. That's fantastic. Instead of going out and like you know having a couple of drinks with the boys and I'm trying to suppress all those, like you know whatever happened at work or home or whatnot, yeah. Yeah. you know the boys would be like, "Hey, bro, like fucking, it's all right. Let's just have, you yeah. know, let's, yeah. have, let's yeah. enjoy the night." You know what I mean? They're not going to yeah. look at you like, "Oh, like you know, what a bitch, he's sad." Like they're, they're still going to make fun of you though, right? Oh, well, it depends how severe oh, yeah, like okay, the yeah, yeah, incident yeah, yeah, is. Like yeah. the boys know, like we, we all take the piss out of each other, but like when there's like something serious, they'll like they'll know like what limits or what. Yeah. So that's all. I'm I'm like I'm blessed to have a, a bunch of boys like that. I yeah. said that will be the same for us, right? Like we know where the boundaries <laughs> are, right? I don't like, know, bro. like if someone's going through something bad, like we know to keep it but serious. But it'll, it'll be like one on one or like two on one or like yeah, yeah. If it's it like won't. a group of us, like you never talk yeah. about anything wonderful <laughs> yeah. if it's a group of us. Yeah, the group yeah. of us is not gonna happen. Well, how many <laughs> friends are you talking right now? Like, how many people would you open up to in your group? Oh man, we've got a group maybe of like eight. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an issue. Like, I've, I've yeah. never experienced anything that was like that daunting to me, and then went out with all of them eight. So I've never experienced it yet, but I'm hoping yeah. that they would have put <laughs> they would do the same. Yeah. Bro. If yeah. I like lost, I told one of my friends one of my insecurities ages ago. This is. At least seven <laughs> years from now. <laughs> which one, which insecurity was this? Uh, I'm not going to name it right okay. now. And out of the 10 you have. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> we're sitting at this formal fundraising dinner. Everyone's- oh, like I know on which one this is. Bro. <laughs> yeah. And this guy comes up to me and bro like, you know, how did you defeat you, this ex- in- insecurity? In front of any everyone. Oh, and I'm like, bro, what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know which insecurity. Yeah, it was. And I'm I looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah so like um around like at least i think we we are the same as we said like if, if it's a group of us like you probably shouldn't bring up these things because yeah. everyone has their own opinion and the conversation just divulges into something else Absolutely. so if Definitely. i like if i said like or oh, um you know i'm having like family issues this that the other if it's more than three people present it, the conversation is going to end up about like oh so what's happening in your love life bro like <laughs> it's going to end up there it's not going to end up in what the issue is at the moment so yeah one on one I think we're good I but, agree yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. if it's if it's like a smaller group of our group yeah. like I'll I'm happy to confide in that, but I don't want to like, like for example, I don't want to invite all the boys over to my place. Yeah, let's kick back, boys, and then I'm like, you know, I'm actually really having a rough time. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That that would like, be the just worst. Kill thing the to mood do. for the whole night. Yeah, and I think I believe only I can fix my issues. Like you, I sometimes ask people advice, but then I feel like you know I'm trying to like make a conversation out of it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if I have real troubles, I'll just talk to. 
This is why people have therapists, bro. You like this is <laughs> because a therapist is meant to be objective. They're not gonna <laughs> give he, you. Did he say some shit when you first told him? He <laughs> bro, he <laughs> made fun of me for like three no, days. Bro, like, nah, bro you, you got soft on us. This, that, the other. <laughs> nah, I call you a loser just today too. But he was like, also when you go to a therapist, like, is it uh, like in person? Does he hold your hand? I'm like, <laughs> first he's a she, and it's not in person to begin with. Oh, okay. Actually, I yeah. I chimed in here. I was like, oh, she, yeah. yeah. I'm like. Why did I even bring it up, bro? <laughs> yeah. I think I was a bit immature back in the day. I think I. Oh, bro, you have up. changed. Bro. No, I've grown even up if I tell then. you now, it hasn't. No, changed. I was considering therapist in front of you for one hour, bro. Okay, I wasn't gonna bring it up, but like a couple of weeks ago, he did. Like I, mm. I, I advised him, like, oh, you know, you should check it out. Like you can get ten free sessions yeah, uh, through cool. Medicare. It's not like that big a deal. You should go check it out. And then he was like adamant. But I knew if there was another person present, he would be like, "Bro, what the hell? We, why yeah. are we talking about the sissy yeah. stuff, bro? Talk about something else." No, nah, I wouldn't so, do that, bro. I, I, I will go to a therapist. Yeah. Okay, when are you Suspect, going? Bro. Um, whenever, bro. I'm, I'm, I would love to see him after a bit of therapy has gone into him, like if he changes or not. Bro, I would. <laughs> I'd love to be a fly in the wall with him and his therapist. <laughs> okay, so I have to head insecurities. This is one of them. <laughs> go through that, but yeah. No, it's straight out like yeah, look, if, like people that do go to therapy, like I, I find it fucking brave. Yeah, good on you. That means that you're taking a first step in the right yeah. direction that yeah. you actually do want to yeah. respect make a change. Good on Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Good on. Thanks, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I like. I'm not like some like advocate for it or whatever. I just know what the issues I have. Well, therapy is not I for everyone. Yeah, not I can't everyone. deal with yeah. them myself, so I need help, professional Excellent. help. Yeah. 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 And yeah. like, even if you have someone personally in your life that like you know you can trust, you go to them as well. Like, yeah. just start with something. Just I think don't therapists like are different to friends then, because like sometimes I t- talk to friends just to like, have a conversation going yeah. on. And they tell me, give me good advice, but I don't listen to anything. It's, it's only what you want to hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And not even like sometimes my friend said like, you know, don't do X, Y, Z. And I'll still, still end up doing it anyway. Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. like, why am I even Bro, talking to but this? You're built different, man. You say one thing <laughs> one week and then you do something completely different the other week and then the next week you're back that, that's what I would cycle. like recommend it for you just like clarity of thought like you have like 500 million things going in your head and then you're like I want to do this I want to do this I want to do this a therapist just like what you need to focus on how you need to build that uh, sort of discipline in your mind that's what they help with that's what they help me with bro and the other thing I found out after going to therapy is like I don't know if it, I don't want to generalize but most boys or men we don't know how to associate our emotions to like the word, uh, the w- the type of emotions we're feeling to the word it stands for. Like when we feel sad, I used to just associate it with anger for some reason. Yeah. Like my mind used to work like differently in that sense. And then I just knew two emotions, like either you're happy or you're sad or like yeah. you're angry. There's no so in between. There's no in between yeah. like, oh, I'm feeling depressed or I'm feeling uh, lost because I lost someone. I didn't know how to associate these things. Yeah. And then go to therapy just like made me realize, okay, I wasn't actually feeling angry. I was disappointed in that situation yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'll just say like to like that l- making that slight distinction learning that slight distinction of what emotion is what yeah that, that's what like can like prevent someone from developing a mental disorder yeah because a lot of people that do get depressed they don't know what this feeling is like say like oh you're disappointed but he only knows happy and sad yeah so he's disappointed from something that's little he's going to take it sad yeah so that, that interpretation for many years all over will can be a combustion to uh, turn into depression or anxiety yeah. or and then if like you that. yeah then you have kids and you pass it on to your kids they exactly. pass it on to their kids so like it just becomes like a cycle so um i remember doing a test where they like <clears throat> gave you like eight sets of faces and you had to describe i think they cut off most of it so it's just like the mouth nose eyes and you had to describe like what you thought that um face was representing as an emotion yeah and i think males tended to do pretty badly in this and then i did it i was i did like really shit and essentially, like it, it's like anxious, sad, like uh, embarrassed, happy. Um, All of that like meant joyful. the same thing to me, bro. Like back <laughs> in the day, yeah. <laughs> and I would be like, ah. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, it was really interesting to see that. Yeah. And yeah. like realize that, like our, oh my, um, uh, perception of emotion is really shit. Have you gotten better after you got married? With I this? have no idea, but probably. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any like weird rituals, like? When you're sad or something, because I, I did. Do do did you ever watch Naruto? Naruto, no. I've I've watched like scenes in that. I definitely know what uh, Naruto uh, is. Anyway, yeah. so when I when I used to get like when something happened and I was like sad and like 
I, I would like wallow in my sadness and to wallow in my sadness what I would do is I'd go to usually it would be at night or something I'd go to bed I'd chuck on my headphones and I'd play the really sad Naruto soundtracks <laughs> okay yeah 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> and I'd just yeah. play that there's like playlists which are like an hour long and then I'd just sit there and like just like wallow in my sadness yeah. like would you repeat what you were sad about in your head while listening to it that kind no. of thing okay so you would just <laughs> be like listening I, to I it. just wanted to feel the emotion okay right? yeah, yeah that might be a good exercise like, I don't know yeah. maybe but like I don't have any rituals like that. But like certain people I know, like religious people, they just like do like recite something oh, when like they're sad. Yeah, that, I, yeah, that could be your version of that. Bro. <laughs> just <laughs> listening to the Naruto soundtrack. Mm. Yeah, but I, I highly recommend. Do you guys <laughs> agree that like uh, women are much more aware of their emotions than men? Like I- in general, like even if we generalize that, like do you believe that's to be true? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've so. never been a woman, bro, so yeah, can't, yeah. can't say from their perspective. No, uh, but you you have women in your life. But I don't think he speaks to anyone, bro. He was saying he has no relationship with his dad. I don't think he has a relationship with anyone, bro. But through your mom's experience or your sisters, you have three sisters. So, like, you should learn, like, you know how, oh, no, they're much more aware of these things compared to me. No, Mario like, agrees with me, right? No, no, I, I agree with that um, point. Um, You're the, calling women crybabies now, hey? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get cancelled. Sure. <laughs> no, but, um, like, studies show, like, Dr. Jordan Peterson speaks about this a lot. The you see? Oh, facts, facts, yeah. doctor, bro. Facts, bro. He's a doctor. He's a doctor. <laughs> Of yes, please, uh, uh, professor, yeah. 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 Of no, linguistics okay. or something. Uh, he's, a, he's a clinical psychologist. Clinical psychologist. Yeah, yeah. sure. I take it. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Let him make his factual point. <laughs> no. But yeah, um, that's the um, the point that he always makes is that there is a um, there's this similarities between males and females. However, there's a distinct difference between um, uh, the uh, biologically the jobs that they choose. So because uh, br- uh, bring it on to that point that you were saying, um, they uh, women uh, can usually pick up and um, and identify emotions more than men, which is why um, in the f- um, in the work field they usually t- women tend to go for service jobs yep. like um, customer service or support workers or yep. health workers things that um, care for yeah things that like uh, care for human beings. Mm. Whereas males usually tend to go for like um, making uh, like the burgers and yeah, like, like flipping you know, the like meat and, like, and yeah. stuff like that stuff. Yeah. Physical aspects of it because biologically dif- biological difference between the yeah. two. Yeah. 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 No, I remember. I saw that. Call as him well. a sexist now. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was just pers- pers- remembering my time in Maccas because I used to work in Maccas. Yeah. And only guys used to work in the back area. Yeah. Yeah. Girls <laughs> used to work in front area. Yeah. And I used to work in front area. Oh, yeah. What does that say for me, bro? Sexy stud, brother. You're a pretty man. <laughs> You're a pretty nah. man, brother. Or I'm feminine guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Either or. Women, for that reason, they watch more, like, emotional dramas on average. Like, women are more into watching, like, K-drama, which are, like, highly emotional or Indian dramas. Yeah. Um, and then they can, like, vicariously live through those characters. For as men, like we have no interest in watching that. <laughs> mm. We we don't want to be watching like some guy get emotional over like some girl not being in his life, this that the other. But women find like pleasure in like watching those things, yeah. and then they don't they don't get weirded out by it. Or I anything. gotta say, Love Island is pretty interesting though. Well, Love Island is not a like a regular show, bro. It's, yeah, fair. Yeah, it, that's just like a social experiment about <laughs> something, bro. Like it doesn't even make sense. Very, very interesting, those type of shows. Yeah, <laughs> psychologically speaking. But I do very, think, like we, like men, we show emotion. Like we watch emotional things, like women do, but we just don't call it the same. So, like women might watch TV shows for that same reason to get that emotion out of it. But I think we do the same with sports. Like sports is that thing for yeah, us, which yeah. women. Oh is like tv shows for women yeah. sports is i think for us like i find myself getting emotional about like a sporting team or a player the same way like a girl would about like some movie character that she's like you know yeah. attached with yeah and then like you know there's like a ufc fight i'm like oh yeah i want to see his fight and then he goes through something like an injury and i'm like i feel sad like oh yeah he went because i'm following his yeah, storyline the yeah, same exactly way a journey. girl is following that movie character storyline absolutely line. yeah that's a good point i yeah. like that He's I always. I, I thought he said all day, bro. What? He's the first smart thing he said all day, yeah. and I didn't think of this either. Yeah. So no, yeah. he's he's a sexy stud fella. He doesn't yeah. need brains. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Uh, like I saw him. Uh, John Wall, his favorite basketball player, oh when he w- left his started, team, bro. the Washington Wizards. I have a video of him just sitting there watching John Wall highlights. We're on a trip. We're like in in the middle of nowhere in Tasmania. He's just put on John Wall highlights and just like, <laughs> bro, he used to be so good Reminiscent in that game watching. Yeah. And I was like, that's the same emotion a girl has when a movie character dies yeah. or whatever the case is. So, yeah. It's funny because the other thing is John Wall, like, so he's um, he was like friends. I think it was a make, make a wish kid or something. And he was like, he became really close to this girl who was battling cancer. I remember this. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then, and then the girl unfortunately passed away. 
And um, the game after that, like while she was, you know, going through the latter stages of her life, he would like write um, on his shoes and stuff, like That's her awesome. name and stuff. And then she passed away and he played, um, the game he played, he put up like some insane stat line. Like it was like 20 and 20 or something yeah. like that. Shit. And um, and then in the post-game interview, like the guy was asking him like, oh, you know, this game was for Maya, the girl that um, passed away. Unfortunately, she passed away. How does that make you feel? Blah, blah, blah. And he just broke down and started crying on like live interview. Yeah. And then the guy's like, oh, um, I can see. Oh, he says, I'm like, you never like this, John. Like, I can see you're really having a tough time. And then like, once he started crying, he like was like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to push him any further yeah. or anything. But to me, that was like, oh shit. That's like, powerful, bro. Yeah. And, it, and, and like, I still like, honestly, like two weeks ago or something, I went and watched it again. Cause, yeah. <laughs> Cause I really like, um, I don't You're know. Attached really to the storyline of John Wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can relate to it in some manner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I have this question. I'll come to you because you work with like youth work and then majority of them are like young men yeah. and stuff like that. What are some like issues that you see young men have that don't get talked about um, as much? Uh -huh. I know it's like a very yeah, big question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing that I found... Um, like the most prevalent which made me appreciate life much more is the simplicity of um just ha having a, a male role model in the house and um not having a father growing up apparently like the obama spoke about it like it's like much more like bigger chances of like winding up in prison or yeah. like you know doing like all these sorts of stuff but yeah main thing is over them and yeah especially because they don't have any parents but more specifically having that male role model that will like be able to guide them into like you know what they need to do and whatnot Excuse me, because a lot of these kids, um, they want to at that age, like um, uh, Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchy of needs. They they want a sense of belonging. Yeah. So they've got the shelter, they've got the food, but they want to feel that inclusion. So they don't have a family, unfortunately. Yeah. And when they do, like sometimes the families aren't the best for them. So they want to try to find a sense of um belonging. And a lot of the things that are going around now is all this fucking, like, rap game and that. That's all, yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. all their motivation. They hear that, like, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah. Like, you know, you know, they're thugs. Yeah. I'm a thug. I'm like, bro, you, you can't even blow a fly away. Like, yeah. <laughs> but they have that mentality yeah. because that's all they hear and they don't have a male role model to tell them otherwise. And we're not their parents, so we can't force them to do anything. We can just tell them and, like, you know, guide them and prompt them. Yeah. Yeah. But our job, our, our hands are tied to an extent. You see so, what you're yeah. talking about there, like, it's such, like, a subculture in, like, the West. Like, uh, like we live out here in, like, the like the eastern suburbs, okay? Yeah. So, th there might be <laughs> issues like this, but we're not even aware, like, this type of, like, you know, uh, association with, like, being a gangster, this, that, the other, even exists in Sydney. For certain people, like, uh, because I work out in the West volunteering-wise, I know of these things, but, like, I ask my friends, they're like, oh, bro, that's an American thing, isn't yeah. it? They don't even know, like, this type of, like, culture exists See, amongst, yeah. like, young males. Until he brought it up, I didn't realize this would be an issue. Oh, yeah. Man, so it's, it's massive. It's massive. So, and like, how yeah. do you get out of it as a kid? Like, how do you guide them to get out of this? Man, like, we're, the, like as I said, our hands are tied, man. So the max we can do is just tell them, oi, bro, like, these are the... This don't listen to happen. Skeptic. Yeah, well, we, 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 we try to tell them, we try to show them, like, what, what happens. And, like, a lot of the news now, all of these shootings that are happening, that's, like, uh, that can help yeah. us with, yeah. like, showing them, like, oh, bro, like, this is, this is how a lot of people end up. Real shit, yeah. But also, sometimes they interpret, like, oh, fuck, guns. Fuck, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I can be a gangster, but yeah. they're, like, because they don't have a father to show them, like, you know, this isn't the right way. Yeah. yeah. And, like, because they're, all they're thinking right now is, like, oh, they're, you know, we're young, we've got a house provided for us, you know, like, like, yeah, they've got a shit hand of cards that, like, dealt with for life, but, you know, they don't have, like, and, and they, I feel like they think that that's for the rest of their life, so they're like, you know what, screw it, why should yeah. I try? But there's much more to life than that, like, they're, you reckon they're it's still a, young. It's a mistake by the, for, 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 it's an issue with the facilities to... F I think it's the government. I think the government needs to uh, change some of their laws and do more, concentrate more on rehabilitation programs. Yeah, so not treating it as like a criminal record yeah, for these kids. Like yeah, like a lot of these kids and like... So do you deal with criminal children or is it just abandoned? Oh, yeah, like we, we can like... They, they, some of them have records in that. Sure. But um, yeah, like what, what I'm like, what, what I mean in that part is that, you know, ev even the police, like we're... A lot of kids are... Because at that age, like when they're 12, 13, when they vandalise and they break shit and like, you know, they do all of that. Anyone else, like our age, we get arrested. But um, for them, because they're at a tender age, they get arrested, they get taken to the cop shop and then brought back. And then when they're brought back, they're already fuming, like, oh, you motherfuckers call the cops on me. Yeah. So then shit escalates even more. Yeah. yeah.
but <coughs> there's no rehabilitation programs that the cops take. I'm like, oh, you can't. If you do this again, you're gonna go this. <laughs> yeah, because like they, they, there's got to be some shit. I know, like, like my, my language is a bit. I fun. love the way you put that. Yeah. <laughs> that's so the like, perfect way to put it, bro. Because then that's something they would understand. Like, you got You got to. The thing is, like. The, the staff that I work with, they're like, oh, no, you shouldn't swear in that. Bro, you've got to speak how they speak. Yeah. You've got to, yeah, like, you know, yeah. go to their level so they understand what they're talking about. Yeah. So, like, they, like you got to you got to be, like, they say, like, you know, it's, it's a bit uh, rude, but no, I find you got to be tough. So you That's can a reality, bro. Like, yeah, you can't, like, yeah, escape from it. Like, if you show them something else, they're like, bro, I'm, I've never seen what you're trying to describe to Exactly. Me. This is not my reality. The thing is, exactly. you're just going to their level, though. Like, sometimes you should be better than them, isn't it? It? Oh, no, 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 like not going level, like, oh, yeah. No, 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 like, oh, no, 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 just like go, go, go going to the level in terms of communication. So yeah. But, like, yeah. if you have positive role models coming in from like whatever society once a week, once a month, that be, kids can actually look up to growing into, yeah, that could be a way to that, get that's, them. That's a program that we run as well, we um, because we've got a lot of Aboriginal kids with us, so we yeah. always try to get um, Aboriginal elders to come down and speak with them, and that's very beneficial for yeah. them as well because they, um, like, what yeah. have these elders accomplished? Sorry, what have these elders accomplished in the life? Uh, well, it depends on the child. So, like, uh, then, like we discussed before, like if someone, everyone around you, um, can be supportive. However, if you're not supporting yourself, then it can't really help. So, we we have all these things for kids, but it all depends on how the kids want to take out what the kids want to take out of the the meetings in that. Because honestly, I haven't been exposed to many elders. I guess most of well us respected have respected in the Aboriginal communities. But, yeah, like, but you like you you have a <laughs> picture of them in your head. It's not no, that's I not No, I have zero picture right yeah. now. But I'm saying like I want to be inspired. Like let's say Jordan Peterson. Yeah. I sometimes listen to him talk and I'm like, you know, I want to be like him. Yeah. Oh, but I don't follow him enough to just to be able to learn through his wisdom. But like let's say these kids, what are these elders, have? what have they accomplished in their life to be able to... It's provide. got nothing to do with like having a career or anything. It's just like how to good, live a good life yeah, it's in the community. Yeah, just like your grandfather would have done for you. You don't know what your yeah. grandfather was working towards when you got to a, a stage where he was like old enough. He was probably retired. So you're not looking up to him in terms of like, oh, my grandfather achieved all these things. Yeah. You're just looking at him as like a role like model. Every community in Desi, like communities, they have like a universal like nani or universal nana or whatever. Yeah. It's like that. It's like a respected elder in the yeah. community. Mm. Just to like, like set you straight. You don't like know if what accomplished like, at all. Yeah. Or what thing is like when he said like, you know, these kids are into rap music, etc., etc. I had a friend in, when I was working in Marcus, I was still going to uni, uh, first year of Mac as I was going uni and this guy was into crimes he got arrested previously so one day I just took him to my uni and I was like no bro let, let, let's get, uh, let's like you know, I wanted him to look beyond, above beyond what his life beyond was beyond Mac as yeah. was we, I went uni I shouted him lunch and stuff because he was still like 16, 17 nothing changed he's still like doing whatever he wanted to do but uh, at that time I felt like you know I kind of accomplished him per se uni but he ended up being a car mechanic and like he did whatever he wanted to do. But by lo- uh, looking, making him sure of what the f- focus on academics and like, you know, what you can do, but just by studying more, you, what you can accomplish. Obviously, we didn't hang out much, so he didn't get learned from enough from me. But these kids, if you're telling them to leave rap music, not leave the rap music, but not condemn content, you're saying what not to do. By telling them what to do, which is could be like, you know, maybe study, focus on studies, see the no, benefits. But like you're looking bring. at it like uh, how Desis look at it. Yeah, bro. They don't Th- this is a completely different way. The, your desi is like, oh, if I fi- if I get a career, if I get a job, uh, my l- issues in life will be fixed. It's got nothing to do with that. What he's talking about is these kids have no motivation to like live a good life. They they don't understand what a good life is. They just think, oh, my friends are doing rap music. There's nothing wrong with like doing rap music. It's just what they listen to and actually act upon. Yeah, that's what, what's associated with rap music? It, that's the issue. Like, oh, I'm gonna be a gangster. This yeah, the thing is, one of her best friends uh, does rap music. He used to do rap music. Yeah, and he did conscious rap like Logic or. It's got nothing to do no, with that. The thing it's is got like, nothing you know, to do with that. But he's, he's saying these kids listen to rap music. Rap so music, it's it's rap music it's is a medium, bro. It's, it's not. It's nothing bad. Yeah, it's their life. They don't like you can still listen to rap music and be like a corporate Conscious person, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. I wear corporate, I listen to rap music. It's got nothing to do with that. Exactly. So, what he's wh- talking about is um, they, they, these kids in life, they, they, because they don't, not one, because they don't have role models, it's got nothing to do with that. They could have parents, they could have uh, elders in their life. It's just that their circumstances are so that they don't see a life beyond like what they're doing, like street culture, knives, this, that, the other. Yeah, it's ingrained in their culture within yeah. their community. Like in their Imagine like you, you, you're, you're living in like suburban areas. Around you is just like people who go to jobs, come back home, this, that, the other. That's your life. 
these kids, that's not their life. Their life is like, oh, my friend got stabbed, or we're going to go steal this from that shop, we're going to graffiti this. And their lifestyle is poverty. completely different. No, but his point initially was sort of good. He sort of had a somewhat there. decent point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why I was agreeing with him for so long. Yeah, like, <laughs> essentially, I think what you were trying to say was like, these boys are surrounded by poverty. The only thing they essentially know is poverty, you know. The, the neighbor, you know, doesn't have, may, may not have a job or works, comes home, lives in a shit house, lives in a shit environment. They all live in shit environments, right? So you're saying, oh, maybe it would be good for them to, you know, see what a good environment is like so they can strive was to pretty much achieve it, right? Yeah. But the other thing is, it's, it's dif- like, it's not easy to get out of, out of the environment. Like, like we've, we've lived pretty, like, decent lives, yeah. right? It's easy for us, like, our parents, like, you know, we, we didn't pay rent until, like, 20 or whatever, or, you know, yeah. however long it was. And we could easily get out of that. Like, you know, I can afford an apartment out in wherever I'm living and stuff like that. Like, it's easy for me to live somewhere. And, um, like, I, it was easy for me to study. It was easy for me to get an education, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't have, like... The thing is, we are really blessed in Australia me. just to be able to study definitely. without paying stuff. Definitely. Like, compared to America, America like all those before, stu- right, we are definitely... Bless, blessed we have you. Medicare and all that kind of stuff going on for us. So these guys just need... A stimulus because anytime you don't need divine inspiration, you can switch on any second and realize, you know, I'm leaving everything behind. You don't need to be like seeing someone die or something massive happen just to change your inner state. You can just choose to be happy today and you can be happy just yeah, now. But the other that's, thing that's is, very like, hard, but it's yeah, very hard, exactly. especially for these kids. Yeah. Like, for, as an example, like, imagine I'm, I'm a youth and, like, oh, you know, I saw a son, he's actually really successful in the construction ingi- uh, industry. I want to be like him. So I go home, I get whatever book I have, whatever pen I have, you know, I might may not have much. Go to if I have a room, I go to my room and then all I hear is my mom and dad fighting and my sister yelling and they're getting verbal. I can't study in that environment. What am I supposed to do? The, the decisions that you're able to make like, oh yeah, if I want to change my life, I can. It's because you backed up with these things that make you privileged enough to be able to think in that way that's what i'm trying to definitely. say definitely yeah right. like if, I, if i didn't used to get flogged by my parents growing up i'd probably be exactly like them today yeah so that yeah. having having that male role model, having just parents yeah. in the household growing up is a significant significant yeah. difference but uh are there like uh any other issues like men in general like not young men but like men that are older now like do you find any issues that we don't talk about as much uh as men that we should men are more likely to be lonely compared to like the like all the men are m- more likely. I've read through studies. <laughs> yeah, uh, nothing personal. Yeah. yeah, so like men are more likely to be more lonely compared to rest of the demographic. Research so like has younger shown women, older women, mm, yeah. whatever the case is. It's and then that's definitely true. Uh, that yeah. is something true though. Like yeah. uh, I'm gonna give you example of my friend back in my previous em- previous employment. We were just sitting in the lunch break, and she is going through her uh, Tinder profile, and she is on the heavier side and on the lower spectrum of attractiveness. Yeah. She said seven guys were hitting her up. I was oh. like, bullshit, no chance. <laughs> yeah. So she so brings her Tinder up. No, no, you don't know this person. Don't act like you know, you know no, everything about me. We've heard this story 50 times. We've okay. heard this story. That's what we're like. I'm interested. Okay. I'm interested. Yeah. So uh, she says she has seven guys hitting her up. I was like, bullshit, no chance. She brings her phone out. And guys are like, you know, trying to meet her or date and get in her pants. And I'm like, bro, this is, what's wrong with, the, okay, now I don't want to like belittle anyone. But yeah, I this know. was this oh, was the, the second thing I'm laughing at has got nothing to do with. No, it does. No, it does though. Like uh, girls have it easier. This is what yeah. I was saying. Like, yeah, yeah no, that, like that's absolutely like true. I'll add on if, to if that. so many guys are vying for this particular entity, yeah. So, uh, so with the whole situation going on, imagine like a good-looking girl. These guys would never even like bother. So there's, there's a well-known acad- <laughs> academic. <laughs> the well-known <laughs> academic Dr. Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that, Andrew, that, yeah. that yeah. describes <laughs> this thing. Yeah, but he, he was coming up as well because like, he's, he's got the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan yeah. yeah, and he, he was basically like, "Oh, you know, um, men have to be good looking, and if they're not, they have to be smart, they have to be humorous, they have to have personality, they have to look fit, they have to look good, blah blah." And then, um, and then he was basically comparing to women, like men have to be all these things, like they have to be good around the house, DIY, you know, everything, right? And so there's so much stuff that men have to do. Bro, I think he lives in like a completely different world. That's the thing. But, but okay, uh, now just uh, make uh, your there point. Is, there is uh, merit. Yeah, I'm just saying, there is merit to what he's saying. Like men have to, there are uh, high expectations for what they have to do. Like they can't absolutely. be emotional. They have to do this, they have to do that. And it's just, it's just a lot. And he like attributes that to um, uh, poor mental health amongst men. Yeah, yeah. And he's saying the right things, but he's not the best source of information. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, what that's, why, yeah. that's why like, yeah. um, when, I, when I was first listening to Andrew Tate, I'm like, oh, he's... Yeah, like some of the yeah, stuff he says is all right, but some of them are a bit sexist. <laughs> yeah. However, when um, 
listening to Dr. Jordan Peterson, he expanded on that point, yeah. which um, to expand that, um, women usually tend to, like as men, we've got that pressure of like, you know, good income, looking good, like, you know, high stature. High stature is one of the most important for a, yeah. a, a female because she wants to have security in the future. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Dr. Jordan Peterson um, defines that um, like women, they tend to like, usually they don't date down. So they only date yeah. up. Yeah. Whereas uh, men in high stature positions, they don't care about um, the st- status of the male uh, of the female, yeah. Yeah. their partner. So yeah, that builds a lot of pressure on the male in this day and age, which does go into like um, you know mental health problems if they don't have that you know succession or that or millionaire status and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, like Andrew Tate does speak some truth, <laughs> but yeah, Dr. Jordan Pearson just uh, speaks about it educationally and like he makes that yeah. distinction. So he does make he does make he does agree with him in some aspects. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Agree. I think you made a mistake in there. You should refer to Andrew Tate as Doctor Andrew yeah. Tate. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else is fine. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, this should be it. Or no, nah, any other final points you guys want to discuss? Anything you wanted to discuss since you're a guest? Anything we left out? Um, Just say men don't cry. Men yeah. Cry. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, men should uh, start crying more often <laughs> if they need to. Yeah. Because bottling up emotions, yeah, that could be very detrimental uh, to the human psyche. And yeah, just. Talk to people, even if you don't have to, you know, get everything out of your chest. Just a simple, like, as you said, people at a dinner table, how was your day today? Just a yeah. normal, normal yeah. conversation yeah. could go so much more further in anyone. I'm going to ask you every dinner now. Yeah. Cheers, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Brother Mario, thank you for being on. Thank, thank you, you for having for sharing me. I appreciate factual it, information for once. I, I appreciate it. Like, we be saying me. stuff, but then we've this heard it from, like, bro, yeah. I, it's I not back by anything. I bring up stats every now and then. <laughs> no, but we just say it like we knew about this. We don't yeah, source, so. we don't do, like, a, a, what's it called, source the information from <laughs> yeah. the right places. So, like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being on. Thank you. It's Had my fun. pleasure for being here. Thank you. Very, I did. I did. Thank you for taking my um, my podcast virginity. <laughs> oh, sure. We love doing that. Pleasure for was mine, bro. <laughs> pleasure was ours, bro. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. This has been another episode of Trash Talk Experience. You can check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and follow us on our Instagram and TikTok. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>